guys, welcome to Crazy Blessed Worship. I'm so glad you're here, and I really mean that when I say I'm so glad you are here. Um, I used to run a company where um, I was a regional manager, and we had hundreds of employees to keep track of. And honestly, one of the biggest things that I think got me to the point that I did in that company was because I really believed in you need to at least know a little bit about something to be able to get to know that person and be able to effectively work with them, help them, network with them. Um, I've had the opportunity to get to know a lot of you guys through Mom Master University over the last couple of years. Um, and I've talked to some of you on a regular basis. Some of them, or some of you, we've touched base here and there. I haven't gotten to interact with some of you, and honestly, I would love to know more about you. Um, it's just kind of generally one of those things that I care. I am not doing this for um, like a monthly membership. This is generally I want to help you grow in what your worship goals are, whether that's to um, maybe you want to be in a worship band, maybe you want to travel doing worship, maybe you just want to learn to worship for yourself or lead your family in worship. Um, whatever your goals are, I'd love to hear them and um, kind of help make a plan and how we can meet those needs. Um, one of the things that I know is kind of a big deal with kids, um, and you'll know this as a parent, is they want to know why we should do something or why they need to do something. And honestly, I was one of those kids, I wasn't really a sass, um, but it always... I always kind of had that wonder, like, why am I doing this? And when I understood that, I always did a lot better. And the thing is, um, as a parent, it's really helped me view God more as a parent, the father figure. I always kind of viewed him as God the Father, where that's Jesus' Father and, like, where he created us. And that was kind of like the gloss for it. That's just kind of the God the Father to me was what it was. And... Honestly, as a parent, I understand that concept so much more because we want to tell our kids to do something, right? Um, there are times where we need to tell them to do something, and they just need to trust us and listen right away. Um, a delay could actually be a really bad thing. Like, let's say there's a safety issue. If your kid's running towards the street, um, and maybe they don't even know any better, and you're telling them to stop and they don't listen, there's really potential harm there. Really not good things can happen. Um, so there's that essential, we need our children to trust us. But I've also found, again, with, with my kids, if I explain to them why we're doing something, we're usually going to have much better following, much better listening. Um, and we connect in that way, too. Um, they learn to trust us in that what we're explaining is right. Um, I know I'm umming a lot today. But with us, that's kind of our deal with God. There are times he just needs us to trust him. And if we don't listen, yeah, there's things that could happen that are really not what his hope would be for us. Um, and the other cool thing is where it's like, why I should do this. Well, that's where we get this Bible. We get his word, guys. Um, it's full of instructions and in explaining why we should do things and how to do them. So between what we have, I mean, tons and tons of knowledge in there for us to follow and to learn from and grow from. And then we have those moments where we just need to trust him. Well, that's kind of what I'm doing with this group. That genuinely is. Um, this kind of all came to me. I kind of explained it a little bit last week. I'll do a video more in depth in the future. But the reason I'm getting into this is some of you are like, where are we going with this group? I'm sure you're wondering that. And um, really that's kind of the idea here is I'm starting in the beginning with these videos, kind of breaking down um, very small pieces of the fundamental of worship. There's actually some very crucial aspects to it that are often overlooked. Um, and honestly, once you grasp those crucial things, it can escalate to your worship to such a deeper level. And I'm not saying you have to be one of those people that you're jumping and you're swaying around in church and drawing everybody's attention. If that's you, great. If that's not you and you're in a different place, 
I want to make sure that you are in that place where what we talked about, or I mentioned in the post for today, is worshiping in spirit and truth. And honestly, I was feeling really overwhelmed just getting ready for today, um, just because there's so much in just what is worship and worshiping in spirit and truth. And not only did the topic come to me, but there's so many different things that are out there in my research that I was digging in, and I'm thinking, I can't cover all of that in just one session. So honestly, I might do another part of this one. We'll just see where we end up with our time here. Um, but I came across a, um, it's a YouTube group. It's Psalm 40, not Psalms, the Psalm. And then it's 40 spelled out, F-O-R-T-Y. And the preaching is talking about something that um, reminded me of something now. He was talking about this Michael Jackson concert. Um, well, what I had caught, there's this thing on Taylor Swift. So it's kind of a similar principle where um, you watch this concert on TV, right? And there are people, like, they've got the big pan out to the audience, and they've got their phones up, they're shining their lights. Um, there are people weeping. There are people pulling their hair, just, like, so emotionally overwhelmed. There are people getting carried over the guardrail because they passed out because of Taylor Swift. They're hanging on her every word. And... Uh, you don't, you don't think about it necessarily at the time, and many of us have been to concerts and have seen similar things. But what they're doing was worshiping. They were worshiping her. And they're, I'm going to refer to my notes here because this is really a good message to me. And a lot of this is from Psalm 40. i got to give them credit. They're amazing. Um, I'll actually link you to the sermon just if you ever want to check it out. It's totally worth it. Um, but they were worshiping a person who'd never do anything for them. Um, didn't, wouldn't sit and listen to them cry or comfort them. Wouldn't really love them. Wouldn't fill that void in their life. But they worshiped her. And then you go to some churches. And during the 15 minutes we're called to worship... We don't even sing. There, you see people texting, um, kind of maybe checking their emails, looking around the room, sleeping. It's our one time. Maybe we get to sit still during the week. So, and that's the one that we are called to come worship. The God who does hear our cries, who does comfort us, who provides us all our needs. And he does love us. us. The man who suffered on the cross for our sins. It really, we don't even sing. But if the greatest artist comes on the radio, we will not hesitate to sing along with every word, to dance. Now, I'm not perfect. And um, I'm not saying that I know everything. And... There's, I'm sure, been times that maybe I've looked around or um, maybe it's just been one of those things where I just went through the motions because that's just what everybody did. Um, but what is worship? If I asked you, and you ask most people, what is worship? They're going to say it's the first 15, 20 minutes of a church service where they sing. And they'd be partly correct. Um, and the thing is, worship isn't just singing. Some of the greatest worship isn't singing at all. And sometimes it's when you're alone. So, what is it? The definition of worship is the activity of glorifying God in his presence with one voice and heart. So, kind of thinking about that. It's also listed as the direct expression of our ultimate purpose for living and an outward display of our inward belief. Now, I'm not going to have time to get into this today, I can tell you already, but yes, we are commanded to worship. And actually, there's things where I want you to look up for yourself. I know we have this tendency where it's like, if someone just tells us what to do, it's so much faster. However, 
when we're told what to do or someone tells us what to think, that's where we as Christians run into trouble. Even if it's you're going to church and it's your pastor talking and he's preaching on a sermon, we're still called to read our Bible. We are, there's talk about people with false teachings. If you listen to, honestly, most pastors, they have their personal opinion or viewpoint based upon what they're teaching. Now, granted, yes, they're called to pray and other things, and they really should be held to a higher standard. Um, but the thing is, if you don't sit and research for yourself, you may have actually received that message in a different way than it was actually intended. Um, we'll get more into that as well. But yes, we're commanded to worship. You hear people and they'll say stuff like, worship was awesome. What was awesome? The band, the lights, they had smoke. <laughs> you know, what was awesome about it? And then you have people that will say worship sucked. What sucked about it? Oh, there was only one person. Or the, the band wasn't proper in time. Or there were only three people in the band. Or I didn't know the words. I didn't like the songs. So what is real worship and how should we worship? What's our view? And some churches say hymns, some say, or do contemporary, um, some have a choir, some have a band. Um, do we have instruments? Do we sing a cappella? Um, how should we dress? Do we raise our hands? Do we just hold still? Um, man has placed these restrictions on God. So I want you to kind of think of that moving forward as we learn more and go deeper into worship. Um, but the real point is that we're here to worship in spirit and truth. And I'm just going to read that verse to you guys again. I know I posted it, but this is John chapter 4, verse 23. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Now, some of this research I had, I'm just like, I did not feel like that was very clear to worship in spirit and truth. I did not, it didn't click with me. And then Hannah had her teaching last night in Time Out Tuesday, and she's talking about um, being ready and being ready or not. Sorry about the interruption. Have little ones running around. <laughs> um, but basically, um, I'm sitting there listening to Hannah's Time Out Tuesday, Tuesday talking about being ready and if God calls us. And if we're just like, well, I'm not ready, well, we can get passed by. And that's kind of the thing. Is if, Are you being called for something? Like, what is Jesus saying to you? What's the Lord saying? He wants you to do. Do you feel like you're being called to something? Um, is it in worship? Is it not necessarily worship? What is it? Um, I'd honestly love to kind of hear from you guys and just see what you're feeling pulled towards. And don't ignore it. Just don't. Um, honestly, there's a song that came to me. Um, it's by Britt Nicole called Ready or Not. I'll link it below in the comments. Um, but it's genuinely, like, it felt so strong to what she's talking about. And I didn't quite feel ready for today's message. I'm just like, spirit and truth. Like, I've read that and I've researched it. But, again, I didn't feel comfortable with what um, what just kind of sat with me. I had a pretty good understanding, but it didn't hit my heart. It didn't hit home. And it was really funny because I'd seen an ad for Stephen Furtick's, um, for his book that was uh, called Unqualified where it basically it kind of goes on that principle of God doesn't um, call the qualified, he qualifies the called. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, I have a lot in my music background and music teaching, but doing what I feel this is pulled to do with this worship program feels so big to me. And I know I can't do it alone, but I know I have that backing, not just with what I feel God pulled me to do, but you guys have been such a huge support and so inspiring to me that I know I have my, my tribe as my back. I got my zebra on today. So 
Um, I'm just so grateful to have you guys. Um, but kind of going in a little another direction tied into this here. My mother-in-law passed away a few years ago. And my father-in-law finally hit the point where he's decided he's ready to start having some of her stuff um, given out to her kids. So my husband and I went over to his house this weekend. And I was really, really blessed. He gave me um, a lot of her journals. And it so happened last night while I'm sitting here, I'm like, I'm, I'm doing this today regardless of how ready I feel because I knew God. I just, I just said, use me, speak through me. And what do I find in her journal? Just, I opened it last night and she had written in here, um, I don't have the verse handy here, I'll look it up. It was 1 Corinthians 9, it looks like it says 25. But what she put in here is the real you is spirit. Now if you go back in the Bible here, and this is her Bible, you guys. It's uh, Woman Thou Art Loosed edition by uh, the editor is T.D. Jakes. And if you don't know who that is, honestly, I didn't either until Terry Savelle Foy started talking about him. So if you listen to her, there's a lot in there. Um, we can talk more about him. But again, you go back in here, and this is John 4.24. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Now, if we're keeping in mind, God is spirit. And I just, I came into the real you as spirit. Yeah, that's not our bodies. And we're of God. We're not, we aren't God, but we are of him. So are we worshiping with our spirit, our, our minds, our, our minds, our hearts, our everything that we are? It's not just going along with some words. Um, it's just your whole heart and mind, all of it. So then it talks more um, about a lot of things in this woman that are loose because T.D. Jakes talks about worship and we'll get into there more too but it's not just standing and singing it's fully, wholly, 100% focused on him and him alone and nothing else should matter now if you go into do you worship in spirit think about that do you worship in spirit are you thinking about God or are you thinking about how you sound? Or are you thinking about the people around you? Are you focused on him? Or are you focused elsewhere? Would outsiders, if they came in to your church, would they know you were worshiping God? Would they? Would they know the congregation is worshiping God? So... Think about where your focus is during worship. And I never really thought about praying about my church experience before going to church. But multiple places, and I really felt like they were point or on point with the whole idea that pray before you go into church about your worship, everything. Just release it to God before you go. So you're much more open to worship. You're much more open to receiving what the message is for that specific day. Um, so, and is it possible to worship in spirit but not in truth? And I'm in agreement with those that say that, yes, it's possible. Now, I'm going to go with Psalm 40's phrase here. Um, and forgive me for it, but it's, <laughs> it's one of those things that it's just, it just hit home. He's talking about how... His phrase is, there's these whacked out Christians out there that they dance with snakes, they cut themselves, they do all sorts of bizarre things, and they feel like this is in the spirit. They, they, they're feeling like they're, they have the feeling, but the thing is, it's not truth. That's, that's not what God calls for. It doesn't say anywhere in the Bible to dance with snakes or to cut yourself. That's not how God wants to be worshipped, and it's really... It's wild to me to think that that's something that's out there, but it is. So let's get into what does truth mean. I did not feel like I have had a great handle on this last night. And then, again from this weekend, my mother-in-law's book that was given to me. It's called Jesus Calling, Enjoying Peace in His Presence by Sarah Young. I am just happened to start reading it. And she was talking about how one night she found herself leaving um, her chalet to walk alone in the mountains. 
And she said, time seemed to stand still as I gazed around me in wonder, soaking in the beauty of this place. Suddenly I became aware of a lovely presence with me, and my involuntary response was to whisper, Sweet Jesus. This experience of Jesus' presence was far more personal than the intellectual answers for which I had been searching. I like that part where she talks about far more personal than the intellectual answers for which I had been searching. This was a relationship with the creator of the universe the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, as in John 14, 6. So, and that's when it really hit me home, or hit home, where we're talking about um, worshiping in spirit and truth. So, again, back in John chapter 4, what we're talking about is God is spirit. Well, what are we taught? Jesus is the way, the truth, in the life. So, do we worship in truth? Do you mean it? Or are you going through the motions? Like, do you worship trusting? Trusting in God. Trusting in Jesus. Trusting the word. What you are taught. Do you believe what you sing? Do you believe what you worship? And you need to remember in worship. You're singing to an audience of one. It's not the people around you. That's not what matters. So some only worship because they think they're supposed to. But again, it doesn't matter how you sing. It's all the glory to Jesus. And as far as worship leaders go, they are not supposed to be singing for you or to you. I ran out of time. I was just interrupted. So, we're going to have to go more in depth in this, and it's going to be more of a discussion next time instead of I've kind of touched base already and reading you directly some of my sources. Um, but what I really want to know quick if you can comment below, if you're one of the people that has picked a word for the year, I want to know what it is, and I'd like to help support you in coming up with different worship songs that will directly tie into what it is your goal is and what you're aiming for with that word. Um, for example, mine is daughter, and I'll actually get into that. Um, it seems a little different than what other people are picking. People are but... delicious! Interrupted again. <laughs> so... What I'm going to end with here is uh, we're also going to be moving into patience and grace and worship, which sometimes I need with my interruptions a little bit. Um, and just, we've got crucial topics to cover. Sorrow, grief, depression, mental health, disappointment, reputation, embarrassment, all these things. How do we worship with those things going on? Um, I challenge you, again, if you haven't picked a word, I challenge you to pick one. I want to know about it, and I would love to get going in what our worship songs are that tie into those that we can meditate on, too, as we go throughout the year. Guys, I thank you for joining me. We're going to have a crazy blessed week. I just know it. And, uh, yeah, next time, let's hope Facebook Live works for me and that YouTube's a little nicer and I get less interruptions. Love you guys. Take care.